sit down. You cut the hardcore crew, chew with the fat. You cut us, shoot the shit. You cut us in the moment. Well, I have my five. I think okay. I, this, n- not as a group, not as a group, all three members of the Shield. I see, I see a lot of promise in Reigns, Rollins, and Ambrose. You split them up and let them go out on their own. I think they all three have a lot of possibility. And I know some people crap all over them, but I think uh, if they would let Ziggler do what Ziggler does best and not relegate him to the uh, jobber department, and let him show off, he could do some good things. And there goes Bay. Apparently he didn't agree. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll give, uh, yeah, Seamus. <sighs> All right, James, what about you? You've been kind of quiet the whole time. What about you? If you could pick your five, who would you be your five? And you can't go with five divas. Hey, shut <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go at least with the first four, the three members of the Shield and Dolph Ziggler. I see potential in all three members of the Shield, and I see potential in Dolph Ziggler. Sheamus, I think he already had that. I don't think I should. We should give him another chance. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, he already had that spot, chance. <laughs> I think the reason why he didn't have that chance is because he got injured. It wasn't like that he, you know, he screwed it up. He just got injured. Um, no, no. I mean, I mean, like Ziggler, like with Ziggler, he's like, all he needs to do with Ziggler, he all he needs to do is just shut up and like uh, have his mouth be the problem because that's why he has heat right now is because of his big mouth. Um, if I had to add another one, maybe Cody. Uh, it's got to be between Rhodes or Santa. I think one of those two could stand out. Mm. If they don't keep on jobbing Santa, but yeah, exactly. I have to agree. To the great um, Ali. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. have a lot of faith in him. Yeah, again, you know, I think those guys would need a lot of development. Um, Joe, all right, we haven't, you know, who, who would your five guys be picked, to, you, know, you know, for the next top five if, they, if you had to? Oh, wow. You, got, you had to put me on the spot. Yeah. yeah. Put oh, the book on the spot. <laughs> give me a second. My wife's giving me my phone back. Hold on. <laughs> All right. But um, but you know what? I didn't even think about. I, I mean, I did think about Seth Rollins because he really has been impressing me. And again, I didn't want to kind of put like all members of the Shield on there. But you know, yeah, uh, Seth Rollins definitely does have a future in the business. Okay. Right now, they're just all in development. They're all on that point where. Where they first coming into the company, so they, they would probably won't be big for about another three to five years. Yeah. Okay. So that. I'll give you my five, and uh, here is my revampment of them. So not only do you get to have my selection, but you, I will give them all a new gimmick and how they came about their gimmick. Real quick. Okay. One, I agree with you. Reigns from the Shield. Here's a big guy that mixes Big Daddy Cool, Diesel, Kevin Nash, with Edge because of the spear. Okay, have him be booted out of the shield. Or the shield loses a match where it's significant. They'll fight the roads and for the tag belts, and they say, well, if the shield loses, they got to break up. And again, what will happen is it will be Dean Ambrose. They'll get pissed off, beat up on him, and go off. You can see a whole, not a Big Daddy cool entire look, but that similar outfit. And he will just be Roman Reigns. He will be, you know, the spear Roman Reigns. And he will be that, that will be the number one guy. Give him a year, work on his promo skills, and you got a winner. You got a future champion there. Number two, since Flair is back in the WWE, and since his little thing with the Miz didn't work, you go, he finds Ziggler. He turns Ziggler into the new nature boy. 
give them a whole new a whole new type of I, I exposure, like brand new. And he doesn't have to be the nature boy Dolph Ziggler. He just gets a whole new attitude. Like it's time for me to stand up and it's time for me to do what I have to do to win. So there's your number two. Number three Ooh. Let me see here. Number three. I I hate to say this, but it would be definitely Cody Rhodes. Break him from the tag team division. And move him on, you know, on singles. Give him that passion that he's been doing. <coughs> as a tag team competitor, have Goldust be in his ring, you know, ringside for a bit and help him progress. And that's it. Hmm. Okay. All right. Number four, I think number four, <clears throat> number four, Jesus, I'm trying to, gets a little thin, doesn't it? Yeah, it's because there's hardly any good talent in there. And that's what I think, you know, what the WWE does is, like I said, when you get into a situation where there's no other guys, you have to go out of your way and say, all right, make a pick. Go out of your way and make that, grab somebody from the roster and say, okay, you know what? You know, grab somebody you would never think, like um, Damian Sandow, and say, okay, here's your shot. We're going to give you a shot to be, you know, the next big guy. You know, do you want it or not? And that's what they had to do. Keep in mind, this is what happened similar when Hulk Hogan left. Because, you know, if you look at somebody like HBK, when he was with the Rockers, come on. I never would have thought that he would have been what he is today. If you told me back then that, you know, you know Shawn Michaels of the Rockers was going to be Mr. WrestleMania, I would have told you a fucking high on crack. Oh, yeah. And you know what? It, the, and even, it's, the thing is, Shawn Michaels had the... It factor. Yes, he does. Yeah, absolutely. Hands down. He did it on his own, but also what they had to do was they had to go out and say, all right, here you go. We're giving you a shot. And look what they even did with Austin. Look what they did with The Rock. When talent leaves, they have to go out and they have to go out on the edge and say, you know what? Now we have to just – But we can't just use the cookie cutter. We have to have that person mold on their own. We have to put, you know, go out there and they have to make themselves. And if they can't make it, we go pick someone else and then Ab- try again. Absolutely. But the individuals you just mentioned, mm-hmm. they came from a rich territory. They developed their craft. Technically, Steve Austin was already technically stone cold in ECW before coming to the WWE. That I did not know. Yes, I've never seen this. I've never seen the Stone Cold uh, character at all. Look up, go back to type up in YouTube Steve Austin in ECW. Okay. If you look at the interviews, he still has the blonde hair, the long blonde hair when he first came in, right? Yeah. And he was mocking Hulk Hogan. He was mocking Eric Bischoff. And he was doing like he would they would sit him at a table and he would do like the commentary like he's like Eric Bischoff. Welcome to Monday night, Quill and he would like he would push the these bongos instead of Mongo. He said like it's just Mongo, you know, push them off. He was developing that stone cold character. And if you see later on uh, videos from him in ECW, the character continued to progress. Like he was becoming more stone cold. When before he left for the WWE, he shaved his head, and he fought Mikey Whipwreck and the Sandman and all these guys. And you could tell that was the beginning of Stone Cold. When WWE took him, they didn't want that ECW product on him. But after a while, they had to let him do the ECW product because, you know, it worked. Every individual from the Rockers, you know, know, Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, their best gimmick, the best thing that we call them on the indie scene is Wham! Because Shawn Michaels was George Michael, you know, Marty Jannetty turned out to be the other guy from Wham! You know, even though people know his name, but he's the other guy from Wham! You know? (laughs) 
and he, but Shawn Michaels excelled in you know through, he came up from the territories. You know, you look at The Rock. Rock had a family that dealt with like the cartoony style. They dealt with serious style. They came from the serious style. So he had all those motivations, and he developed that character. You know, and they even told him, go with your gut instinct. The problem with today's product is, and and be honest, look at the characters. You know, people there, they they are not, they can't, they don't know how to perform their character. Like The Miz. The Miz could be the next Roddy Piper, because he could be that obnoxious, funny you know, character that they were developing to him to be. And unfortunately, they clipped him off. Coffee Kings, that could have been the next type of Booker T slash Jamaican, you know, and they stopped Even though he's South that. African. Exactly. You know, it, all those things, they could have developed and kept going. I'm not saying bring back all the gimmicks, but if you notice, they are bringing back the gimmicks. Because they know that the whole roster is stale. Look at Big Show. He's he's gone. He comes back. He he's you know stronger. He's slimmer. He comes back. He's fatter. He's slower. Here's a man that they absolutely. If you wanted to do something with him and make him big, think of I like this. Hey, he's the Big Show. He comes out. All of a sudden, somebody levels him, knocks him out. Who is it? Kali. And they do the old John Studd, Andre the Giant, who's the better giant? You know, they did it with Kevin Nash and the Giant in WCW. Now, you make the big show serious. You make Kali an evil monster that he's tired of playing, you know, he's tired of playing the characters. He's tired of playing the, he's tired of dancing with midgets. He's tired of, of hanging around bubble-headed, you know, divas. You know, now he wants to show his superiority. That's how you do it. Then you go to a big event. Oh, my God, the Battle of the Giants is back. That's how you sell that. You know, the problem with each person is they just don't know how to do things. It, it's, and that's why they need these old, uh, old uh, talents back. All right. Uh, Bay, right now we're talking about, um, you know, if WWE lost their top five guys right now, which, of course, is Cena, Orton, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan, and uh, you know, a few other guys, who would your five guys, three to, if you could pick three to five guys to replace them, who would they be? Ooh. <laughs> oh, man, that's actually a tough one. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, I would have to pick. I should have. He should have progressed time ago when he got snubbed from WrestleMania. I would have to say Brodus Clay could have been one. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, even though his push got pushed back, I, we really know why. And just because I thought he, he'd be good enough, but. He's just as stale as Sheamus as a champion, but you got to admit his ring work is, you know, out there. I would have to say Del Rio. So that'd be my three. All right. That you know, and that, those are different picks. That's a different view because I mean I, I you know and that's a that's a very interesting look on those and um. All right. Um. And, you know, guys, I, I, I think that if this happened, I mean, you never know. You never know what fate brings when, say, if, like, WWE, you know, I mean, Cena's 36 years old. He could very well consider, you know, sticking around for a while or even that. He might even start doing the wrestling, you know, the, the, the Undertaker thing where he's only doing part-time. So, um, right now we're kind of doing our pre-show thing. So, let me ask you, um, we know that um, Undertaker is getting ready to, uh, you know, coming around and face somebody at WrestleMania, if you guys could pick one person that he should face at WrestleMania, who would it be? You know what, Andy? I'm going to start with you first. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I 
I don't even know if he's in Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior? Interesting. All right. Do you think it would be a good match? Or do you think it would be just, you know, how, how, how do you think it would play out? Not really, but the WWE, if the WWE can make um, an Undertaker match interesting, then I'm sure they can make a Warrior match interesting, even though we watched that Warrior match on the independent mm. circuit a couple of weeks ago. So if they that can make Hulk Hogan look interesting, they can make anybody look interesting, I feel. That's how it's marketed right. and how it's put together. All right. Lance, over to you. Well, since I gotta give it Daniel Bryan. All right, and you know what? I, I I'll have to agree with you because Daniel Bryan, I think that would be a great pick. You know, um, I think his Undertaker um, always wanted. To, you know, he's been uh, tweeting a lot that he wants to face the Undert- uh, that he wants to uh, face Daniel Bryan this year. Well, it's gonna happen this year. You never know. Um, Bay, your thoughts. Wow, you know what? <clears throat> we can be here for hours debating this. Oh man. But I'm gonna go out on a I'm gonna go out on a small hunch and I'm gonna pick the one person that I think could give Undertaker a run but will just be a little bit short of of success. And my pick Sadly as it sounds, it's, you know, I would have to pick Del Rio because, you know, that top rope Insiguri kick and, you know, he has that, he has like that tactician type of role where he can ground his opponents and, you know, he'll keep you grounded for a while plus that cross, that cross on bar, whatever submission he has, you know. But, I mean, that would be a better pick. I mean, you guys already said Daniel Bryan. I mean, that would be the best pick by far. But I want to go outside the box a little bit because, you know, every wrestler has different moves and different perspective in the ring. But I think Del Rio with his groundsman's work and how he can put people down, that would be my choice. So, there you go. All right. The uh, cross arm breaker versus the gates of hell. Nice submission match, that wouldn't be. Uh, James, you're over to you. Uh, we don't have to go with Daniel Bryant. For this one, I, I don't see anybody else really. All right, Joe, your thoughts? If this was uh, Undertaker's retirement match, I would go Daniel Bryan. But if it's just another match that he's just gonna win and move on, and you're into it for just the money aspect to make this match worth something, mm-hmm. yeah, either, I'm not gonna say Sting. I'm gonna say Goldberg. Hmm. All right. And, you know, and that's the thing that, you know, Sting has been a name, of course, that comes around every year. That yeah. Sting, you know, is going to be, you know, possibly leaving TNA and everything, stuff, which we're going to be talking about during our show later on tonight, so I'm going to hold off on that. So, but Goldberg, <laughs> you know, do you think really that with the chance of actually Goldberg even coming on for a match, you just don't see that happening, or is that just a fantasy match? It, never say never. We've already seen the never say never stuff from Vince and Triple H, um, it, it all goes by money. If some, okay. if somebody offers an individual enough money and enough, um, enough incentive to come in, they'll do it. You know, they'll come back. Look at who would have thought uh, Ultimate Warrior coming back. Who would have thought? Um, Bruno Sarmatino in the Hall of Fame. Who would have thought the New Age Outlaws? You know, it's never say never, and money talks. All right. Well, you know what, guys? Um, A lot of these picks are great, but I'm going to give you a pick, and I'm going to think outside a little box, too. And Andy, I know you might even agree with me on this one, and I think Andy's even not even talked about this one time. Kane. I would like to really see Kane do this. And it would be in a retirement match. Have, you know... Undertaker come out and call his brother out and say, Kane, what's happened to you? You know, you used to be a dominating monster. Now you're this pitiful of a man who's selling out to the authority. You know, you're I want you mortal. at WrestleMania. Yeah, I want to make you, you know, I, I want you at a match at, you know, WrestleMania. And of course, if they'd have Kane... Done if, they, it might have, if they'd have done it probably five or six years ago, it could have given Kane for the last... 
run in his career. That big push that he's always needed, taking the torch off the Undertaker to carry on the legacy for his brother, which then they could have bought in a new character um, that could have carried it on for the next generation. But no, WWE are too thick. So now, if Kane wins, people are going to expect Kane to be the big tough guy. God, he's the only one that's defeated the Undertaker, and he's going to be carrying on. And if he retires next year, we're going to think, what a sellout. Mm. Well, you know, Andy, um, I, I, I was talking about this with Joe a little bit before our pre-show, but I'm going to ask you this. Um, Jim Ross said in a blog that the, uh, that the streak, Undertaker streak is not torch-passing material. Would you agree with that, or would you disagree with that? Um, as much as I like Jim Ross, and I have been watching some of his blogs and tweets, I think he just throws people off the scent. I think he's fu- when he's on the internet, I think he's paid for the WWE to throw bullshit out there. To be perfectly honest, I really uh, do. You know what? I agree with you one hundred percent. And uh, when I read, when I read that, I thought it was one of the most foolish statements he'd ever made, whether he's backing the WWE or not. Yeah, that know? guy is an intelligent guy, but some of the things he tweets, you think. A three-year-old child could come out with a better storyline than that, or a better idea than that. And I just think he's fobbed off to give all the internet people something to do when they're bored. Oh, let's go see if what Jim Ross has said is right. I mean, Jim Ross is going back 12 months ago, said, as long as he's got breath in his body, the ultimate warrior will never step foot in the WWE ring. That's gone wrong. Is he going to die then this year, JR? I, I, I think... Uh, and you're not telling me, even though JR's supposedly not employed by the WWE anymore, he hasn't got the inside information. Oh, of course he, he has. And that's, and, and that's another thing he tries to say with uh, during a lot of his blogs. Oh, I, I don't know what goes on in that company anymore. Bullshit. Mm-hmm. Don't sit there and tell me that you're not, you're not working with a company in some form or aspect, especially now with the WWE Network. Um, that's another thing I want to talk to you guys real quick about. Um, looking back in August, what happened with the um, the whole WWE 2K synopsis, where um, supposedly that was the reason why he was released because where um, Ric Flair took over the company, you know, took over that synopsis, and you know, it was uh, the, I guess they would call it the the takeover. Um, do you think that was a reason for him to be released? Do you think that's a, a legitimate reason? Um, I'll you know, Bay, I'll ask you that one. Woohoo, MVP. Well, oh, yeah. Sorry, I was watching the Pro Bowl draft. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I was the, the, the Pro uh, Bowl, the Pro Bowl that people don't really care about. Yeah, so. is the Forty ers being drafted? Only one of them so far. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. You know what? This was a bad call from WWE to release Jim Ross. I, I, I mean, I mean. You know, Flair, Ric Flair is Ric Flair at the end of the day. I mean, we all know what he's about. He's a 16 time champion. He has two WWE Hall of Fame rings. I mean, we could sit here till 5 in the morning and talk about Flair's career. But same time, I think it was a bad call for Ross to be uh, released. I, I mean, you know, he was a little bit intoxicated. That we kind of knew. I, I did watch the conference on the stream and... You know, it, it did seem like he was a little bit off and everything, but on a business level, again, WWE dropped the ball again. I mean, th- this was stupid by far. And with all, just to end it quickly on my side, just, I don't think it was right. I mean, officials could have pulled him to the back and said, okay, Jim, um, it's okay to have your drink, but you're going to be out there with cameramen, professionals, writers from different sites and companies. I mean, you're going to have to tone it down a little bit. But, you know, I understand WD should keep it professional, but at the same time, it's like, you know, push comes to shove. I mean, they thought they did what's best, but I just thought it was a bad move. I mean, if anything, I thought Flair had it worse than Jim Ross. So I'm going to say it's bad on WWE as far as I'm concerned. But the, uh, here's some that you know, was brought up. Like, uh, with a, uh, in a news article, uh, News article I read, like maybe I think a couple, of, even or maybe even today, is that the WWE is willing to work with Ric Flair, even though they had that whole situation. Why? No, I think that means Triple H is prepared to work with Ric. If Ric Flair comes back to the WWE, I'll, I'll guarantee I'll stop watching the product. Even if he comes back as a manager or the writer, because that bloke should get out of wrestling. He's a dick, and I'll put that on record. The man is a ball end. 
Well, now keep in mind, I mean, wasn't he on Old School Raw? I mean, he was on yeah. a recent edition of Raw. Opened it up. It's the same old shit when he comes on. It's like when you go to a wedding or a birthday party and your granddad gets on the dance floor, you crawl up your own arse with embarrassment. Every time yeah. Ric Flair comes out, I get embarrassed I'm a wrestling fan. <coughs> and that's a fact. That's not a nasty statement. I, I used to like Ric Flair in his day, but my God, man, you, you're in your 60s. Give it up. Yeah, and also, too, to comply with Andy saying, too, I mean, WWE just basically told Flair, you know, you, you know we're going to let you back, but you got to be on your best behavior because they know now what he's about, and he's susceptible to anything that would just destroy him. And the difference between the synopsis and now is at least WWE gave him a second chance, but at the same time, I mean, if you're a promoter, and Joe would know this very well, you know, you, you got to watch the people that you bring into your company because chances are they can go buck wild and, you know, act the fool, go insane, you know, and then that looks bad for you. So, you know, Flair had to be on his best behavior, or else WWE would never give him that chance to begin with. Think about it, it, it ju- all it tells me is it just tells me that how oh, shit Triple H is going to run that company when anything happens to Vince. Well, let's talk about this for a second. Let's keep this in, 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 in fact. You know, not, no, give all what you said in uh, consideration, Andy, because you know what? You're right. He's 60 years old. Um, yeah, you know, he's here's been, a scenario. Uh, that we could, well, I'll open this up for the, the people that go on the Facebook page. Heaven forbid this doesn't happen. But if Triple H goes through a bit of a downer, with Stephanie McMahon, and they get divorced. Is he going to bring China back just to rub everybody's face in it? Because that's, that's, kind of that's the kind it's of balance. That's the kind of balance he is. If something, if they ever did something like that, you would not see Triple H in the company. Yeah, yeah. he would be gone because he divorced then, Pat Ch- uh, Stephanie. There goes his power. I don't. I wouldn't say there goes his power that quick, that fast. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I mean, but the question is with Rick Flair. Getting back to real quick, Rick Flair, real quick. Um, now keep in mind when he went off the deep end. You know, his son had just died from an overdose. He had had a lot of other personal issues, which okay, maybe this fault or his own fault. So you guys think that maybe he was kind of hitting rock bottom at that point? Yeah, he already hit rock bottom way before that, Rick. I think. Yeah. I, maybe I have, maybe his son committed suicide because he was sick of seeing his dad on WWE broadcasting and he couldn't get on. When he kept, wow. when he kept, you know, no, that's a bit of a low blow, but okay. No. Uh, you know, he, here's the thing: Re, you know, Reed Flair, no matter what he did, he's always going to be Ric Flair's son. Of his dad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He even if he comes back, as, you know, I don't know if he says he's the the new nature boy or something like that. He will never have an identity for himself. And I think that was killing him. Sooner or later, depending on, and it all depends on the relationship really. Look let's look at another father son duo, Scott Hall and Cody Hall. You know, Cody's gum doing the now um the whole Razor Ramon gimmick, you know, is you know I don't think he's going to commit suicide any, you know, any time. But he's always going to be known as Scott Hall's son. Yeah. Well, I don't think. Does anybody I, 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 know? Yeah, I'll throw one out for you. Uh, and this is my opinion. Does anyone know of any father and son um, wrestlers that are still actually employed by the WWE as a proper fighter? Because, like Randy Orton's dad did the honest and decent thing and stepped away and let his son take the limelight. But with people like Ric Flair, no, he pushed his son out. Ted DiBiase did exactly the same, and that's why Ted DiBiase Jr. got nowhere. I've noticed they've pushed Dusty Rhodes out, but I think he's with TNA. I'm not sure where he is these days. Don't really care. No. But he's he only comes and does a bit and disappears. But yeah. people like Ric Flair is like Hulk Hogan. They're going to be there. None of their family, no matter how talented they are, are going to be able to do anything in the WWE till the old man hangs his boots up. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think right now, speaking of Ric Flair, I think one of his daughters is in NXT as we speak. Charlotte. And, and yes. she'll, be, Charlotte. she'll be exactly Charlotte. the same. She can probably be the best diva in the world, but until her dad keeps getting in that ring and, woo, she's going to go nowhere because she's going to be living in that that's Ric Flair's daughter. She ain't as good as a dad. We need to forget what a dad was like and see her come forward and think, yeah, she's got a talent on her own. 
Well, let me ask you this. Here's a quick, quick question. I mean, you, in, in, in most cases, I'd have to agree with you, but you think because she's a female, she might get a pass that might people that might look at it a little bit different? No, because if Natalia Knight or father, Jim the Anvil, was still fighting, she wouldn't get a push either. Well, well that's no, not really fighting. He, here's the thing, and I'm sorry, Rick. Uh, Natalia gets a push, and and I tell everybody, look at this. Every time Bret Hart is on, he Natalia wins. Or any time they're in Canada or something, Natalia wins. So even though it's not father son, it's you know niece and uncle. It's still look who has to push to do stuff. Yeah, the yeah, it's still a family related. Mm-hmm. It's still uh-huh. second gen. And you know what? Rollin Reigns, same thing. The Rock. Mhm. So, but you know, and and that's I I think you know, we could be seeing a pattern. I mean, you know, maybe it's these people who get that stroke so to speak. Uh, it it's, depends on who's favored at the moment. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's the best way to say it. Who's more favored? Okay. Well, you know what, guys? I think we're going to wrap this up and we're going to get ready for our main show. Um, Joe, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you at? <laughs> oh, jeez. They can find me on Facebook at Classic Wrestling Association. You can also find me on our website, which is Classic Wrestling Association dot com. You can also find us on Twitter at Pro Wrestling CWA and also on YouTube at CWA uh, Classic Pro. All right. Andy, why don't you tell everyone they can find you on? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Stoke Haunted, or you can find me on www.stokehaunted.com where you can find links to where you can find me anywhere. Twitter, Facebook, Bebo, whatever, you'll find me. All the addresses on there. I'd rate and, and subscribe. Will. All right. And Will, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you out about your new location? Uh, our new location is at www.uvlog.com, where now me and James have now found our new home where we don't have to be evicted, uh, where we do our game show streams, sports debates, and uh, anything that comes to mind when not mentioning Ric Flair. That is www.uvlog.tv slash the hood. Oh, okay. And I believe James is over there as well, and he's under the Who That Temple? Yes, this is the Who That Temple, uh, uvlog.com. Uh, and, you know, if you want to find just me and MVP, we also put our news articles up on the HWR site. I've been busy, so I have not done any of the Devo of the Week, so we'll wait for Monday and I'll bring you up to speed. All right. And Lance, what do you got going on over at you, uh, Lance Moss TV? I got album reviews, NASCAR reviews, uh, redneck cooking videos, Q&As, and whatever else pops in my head. All right. And, of course, Jack Shit, who's been uh, on the road with us. Uh, Ms. Shit, are you with us? I am. I've, uh, I've been listening for, like, the last hour. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find me anywhere, uh, you can always find me on Zello. Just search my name, Jack Shit, J A Q U E S C H I T T, two separate words. All right, and uh, she's always oh, hanging out in the numbers channel. Uh, so, all right, and of course, you want to check um, us out. Head on over to the Facebook page. That's Facebook.